Two weeks ago, I made a video called The Genius Soundtrack of The Sopranos, where I went over my favorite songs used in the show and the meanings behind them. That video got a lot of attention and a lot of you guys were commenting other really good suggestions. So this is part 2 of that video, the best songs used in The Sopranos. Also, thanks a lot everyone for the insane support on my last 3 videos, it generally doesn't feel real. Since the videos are doing so good, I am gonna try to upload at least once a week, so make sure to like and subscribe, and let me know what type of bands or topics I should talk about in the future. Now back to the video. Okay, so the most requested song that people kept mentioning in my comment section was Up in the Club. I really don't know how I could forget this iconic scene, but for everyone who doesn't remember, it's the scene where Matt and Sean are chilling together while only wearing underwear, and then Fura comes in and asks them for money. Now this scene is just pure cinema, because it foreshadowed Vito's character in season 6. Just two dudes hanging out with each other only in their boxers. I've seen gay p straighter than this, and trust me, I know gay p Up in the Club is a very deeply meaningful song about chilling with your homies and having a bulge in your pants, so it does fit this scene pretty well. Truly amazing. <laughs> On to a serious note, we have one of the saddest scenes in the entire show, and it's the scene where they use Comfortably Numb by Pink Floyd on season 6 episode 18. Now this is a big spoiler warning to anyone who hasn't watched The Sopranos, do not watch this part of the video and skip to the other song I will talk about. For anyone who has watched it, this is the scene where Christopher ends up in a car crash and Tony decides to kill him. The scene starts with Christopher saying, this departed soundtrack is a fucking killer, which doesn't seem too subtle when you're re-watching it, but on my first watch I didn't even notice. Obviously, it's talking about Christopher getting departed and killed. The thing I liked about the start of this scene is that as soon as Pink Floyd starts, the mood instantly changes. Tony and Chris start talking about life and stopping smelling the roses. Tony says every day is a gift and Chris starts talking about his kid. Right after that, the music gets louder and he starts speeding even more. Tony looks at him and can tell that something's wrong. He can tell that Chris is on drugs, while at the same time he has his kid in his mind. The song describes Christopher's relationship with drugs. I hear you're feeling down, but I can ease the pain and get you on your feet again. This is not who I am, I have become comfortably numb. At that point, Tony knows that everything is over. This is not the same Christopher we've seen at the beginning of the show, and it's definitely not the same Christopher that Tony raised. After that, they get in a car crash, and Christopher tells him to call a taxi because he would never pass a drug test. At that moment, all of Tony's beliefs get confirmed, while he's looking back and forward to a cocked up Christopher and a baby stroller that could have well been his child. It is over, and he decides to put an end to this. He blocks Christopher's nose and kills him. The blood is literally on his own hands. At that moment, you start to question not if Christopher would have survived the car crash if Tony wasn't there, but if he would have ended up like this if he didn't join the Sopranos crew. Of course, there's no guarantee that his life would have ended up much better if he didn't join. He would have probably ended up in a similar scenario, but you see that Chris's life was literally on Tony's hands. On the other side, this is not what Tony's thinking at all. He decides to kill Christopher for the sake of the baby, or did he? Christopher's addiction was starting to become a problem for his crew. He knew he had to kill him off, and the kid works as a big excuse for him to finish what he has to do mentally, but at the same time, it makes the audience side with Tony once more. What part of Tony's mind was thinking about the kid and what part was thinking about his money is for you to decide, but Tony definitely didn't do all of that just because he's such a saint. Moving on from that, we have the scene where Tony makes Janice angry on season 5 episode 10 cold cuts. And I know this is supposed to show how Tony truly is and blah blah blah, but it's a really funny scene. Janice has been talking to him throughout the episode about how she's finally dealing with her anger issues, and it's making her feel better and happier. Now do you think Tony would be like, that's great big sis, I'm so happy to hear that? Well obviously not. In the most Tony Soprano fashion, he starts mentioning the son that Janice abandoned. Janice tries to ignore him, but Tony just doesn't stop, and eventually says this. Bleu, where is me ma? So much for anger management classes. The song that plays here is I'm not like everybody else by the Kinks, and it shows that Tony just accepts the fact that he's not a good person, and he doesn't want to see his sister happy, he's just filled with jealousy. He's not like everyone else who tries to be as good as they can. He knows what he's doing is bad, but he still does it, because that's just him. Really a hashtag Sigma moment. In season 1, episode 4, the show uses the song Look On Down From The Bridge by Mazzy Star. The episode is called Meadowlands, which I just recently learned it's an actual place, and it shows Meadow teaching AJ about the mafia and telling him that his dad and his whole family are part of it. AJ doesn't believe her at first, but by the end of the episode, he realizes that Meadow was right the whole time. This is the iconic scene with Christopher and his broken neck, which everyone uses as a profile pic, and Tony and the rest of the crew on the funeral. The place is surrounded by police guards, which are taking pictures of everyone there. 
and for Tony and Christopher, this is just another day. After Meadow talks to him, AJ finally sees everything so clearly, even though it was in front of his eyes this whole time. His dad is not the good guy he thought he was, his whole life has been lied to. You can see a sense of disappointment and sadness and anger in his eyes, and then Mazzy Star starts playing. The song describes AJ moving on from his childhood. The bandage has been ripped off and he finally sees his dad for what he truly is and he just has to accept it. He can't do anything else. This is the start of AJ's slow decay towards his depression that we later see in the show. Another song that I wanted to mention on the first video but I forgot the title of is Little Bird by Annie Lennox in season 4 episode 12. At this point Tony's and Carmela's relationship is just at the lowest point it has ever been. While Tony's talking to Carmela about Meadow, the song Little Bird plays and it shows exactly what's going on in her head. She sees Meadow as this bird who is finally leaving the nest and she's worried about her flying off. At the same time, she sees herself trapped in this marriage with Tony as she has been trapped for many years now. She wants to be free and fly away, but how many times has she wanted this and never gone through with this? Will she ever be able to actually leave him or is she stuck there forever? Tony's and Carmela's relationship is one of my favorite things in the show because it feels so real. We know Tony is morally wrong because of the mafia, but Carmela isn't perfect either. She stays with him for the easy life and she's aware of this since season 1. She knows that Tony is a bad person, but she doesn't want to start her life from zero again, especially when she also has to think about her two children. Clearly, a part of her stays with him just for the money. There's more than that. She's obviously unhappy, but she struggles to find the courage to speak up, something that is very common in a lot of marriages. If she leaves him, she has to give up her whole life and she has to think about how the kids will handle this and who knows what can happen when you break up with the biggest mafia boss in New Jersey. Some of these issues you think are easy to solve, but there's so much on her mind on top of her mundane and depressing life. And the cherry on top is the way her religion sees marriage and divorce. The next episode she decides to go through with this decision, and we get one of my favorite and most heartbreaking scenes on the whole show. He talked to you all, poor you! He made me feel like I mattered! You know, you asked me the other day, but I read his cousin has that you don't have. And I thought about it because it's a pretty good fucking question. And yeah, she's sexy enough, even with the one pin gone, but that's not it. I could converse with her because she had something to say. I am here. I have things to say. Besides, bring the fucking chairs down and did you sign the living trust? She's a grown fucking woman who's been kicked around and she's been on her own and she's had to fight and struggle. Unlike me, is that it? Who the fuck wanted it like this? She can finally let it all out and tell Tony not only about Furio, but how she's been feeling her whole life. She does love him, but it looks like Tony doesn't even consider her emotions. He just starts talking about how much better Irene's cousin is. She knew Tony has been cheating all these years, but this is finally the limit for her. She can't take it anymore, and Eddie Falco gives such a good performance on this scene. I know sometimes Carmela seems annoying, but it's so sad to see the show from her perspective. Nobody in this show is happy, well except Polly, I guess. What do you hear? What do you say? Continuing in this relationship, we have the ending of season 5 episode 12, Long Term Parking. Another massive spoiler alert, so click off or whatever. This is the episode where Adriana gets killed by Silvia. The episode ends with Carmela and Tony on a forest, similar to the forest where Adriana died. We can see Tony getting overwhelmed by sadness because of her death, while Erupt in Memory by Sean Smith plays. We hear the words, it couldn't have happened to a better man. Tony isn't sad because he loved Adriana, but because he knows he's not a good man. Throughout the show we see that there is some good in him, but ultimately he can never change who he is. He is too far in and he knows his actions have ruined multiple lives. There's nothing else for him to do except roll into sadness again. This episode shows exactly what's going on in Tony's head without even having to say a word. And it's much more complex than just good guy or bad guy. He knows he's a bad person and he knows he'll never truly change, but at the same time it makes the audience connect so much with him. The show doesn't only focus on Carmela and Tony though. We mostly see the world from Tony's eyes to get us in his mindset and to show that even though he's responsible for ruining so many lives, he isn't there to observe this. As long as his business is going well, it's out of sight, out of mind. But from time to time, the show will ruin this perception with characters like Eugene or Davis Catino. The latter one makes an appearance towards the end of the last episode of the second season. Tony tries to tell him sorry that his wife left him, but he doesn't even remember her name. That's how insignificant Davy's life is to Tony at that point. He knows that his life is destroyed, but he doesn't care. Why would he? Right after this, we have the ending scene of all of Tony's friends and family gathered around celebrating Meadow's graduation, and they're all laughing and smiling. The through and through by the Rolling Stones starts playing, and we get to see the contrast between Tony's life, that has everything he can ask for, and the people whose lives were ruined for Tony's comfort. Through and through is a melancholic song which doesn't have a happy ending. 
And this episode shows us that most people intervened with Tony's business do not in fact get a happy ending. Because if they didn't, then Tony and his family wouldn't be where they are now. This is not just a commentary on the mafia, but capitalism itself as well. The people at the top get to enjoy their perfect lives without thinking of the people at the bottom. An amazing ending for one of the best episodes of the whole show. Some other iconic scenes that I didn't mention on the first video are the scene where Tony chases Phil down with his car and makes him crash while Rock the Casbah by the Clash plays on his car. The lyrics say Sharif doesn't like it, in this case the Sharif, the ruler, Tony, doesn't like that Phil is trying to run away from him and makes him crash. It's a pretty good song choice that makes the scene even funnier and more iconic. In a similar upbeat scene, we have the first episode of season 3. The FBI is trying to sneak into Tony's house and plant a microphone, while every breath you take plays in the background. Again, the use of this song isn't really subtle, but it does make the scene and the whole episode pretty fun to watch, and it has been stuck into people's heads throughout all these years. Anyways, these are all the scenes I wanted to talk about today. I hope I didn't forget to mention any of your favorite songs in the show, but I probably have, considering the amazing catalog this show has. Also, recently I made a Patreon, since most of my videos keep getting claimed anyways, so if you wanna check that out, it would be pretty cool. There's a private Discord there, where we're gonna be discussing future videos. Make sure to like and subscribe, and check out part 1 on the link down below. Also, check out Misclick.